ship? This is also a production zone that Paimon's never seen before. What's going on? How much do you know about Fontanian history? I... Uh, not much at all. Well, then maybe you haven't heard the story of ancient Lemuria. To give you a quick rundown, Fontaine used to be ruled by the Lemurian dynasty. According to legend, the Lemurian king Remus came to this land after being inspired by divine revelation and found the seer Sibylla, who had taken on the form of a golden bee, taking the golden bee with him and riding on a huge ship, the Fortuna. He created his nation above the surging waves. He called his nation Lemuria and used the Fortuna to incessantly search for new tribes and islands, calling on them to join his empire. There's a ship in this story too? Where there's water, there'll be ships. People believe that hope can always be found at the end of a voyage. Do you believe that too? To a point, I think. As you've already seen, I have a whole factory's worth of labor materials and technology at my disposal. Certainly can't hurt to give it a try. So the moment I began to speculate that the Primordial Sea might lie underneath the gate, I also began this project. Were you inspired by the legendary Fortuna? Hmm, maybe. Fontanians need something to hold on to to cope with the impending disaster. Were the workers to find out the truth behind this ship, riots would destroy the fortress faster than any catastrophe. As the fortress's administrator, I'd never make such a reckless call. All right, that's enough talking for now. I'll need another three cups of tea to soothe my throat. Do you have any other questions? Seems like you're good. Come on, I'll take you back. I'll leave you here for now. Oh, uh, thank you so much. No worries, but don't forget, it's up to you whether or not you want to share what you just saw. What you do from here on out will likely affect those three as well. Yeah, we'll put a lot of thought into it for sure. Great. I look forward to what happens next. Squall Fury! Quit following me! We're back! Welcome back. Do you want a cup of tea? How can you be so much like Risley, always drinking tea? Huh. Actually, now that you mention it, I just remembered something now. While I was sedated, I could still barely hear two people talking next to me. They were discussing everything, from the leaves, to the water, and even the teacups themselves. Must have been Risley and Sishween. Yeah, I heard one male voice and one female, so it should have been the two of them. They really were just talking about brewing tea. I really can't make sense of this place. So, Traveler, Paimon, were you able to learn anything from Risley? He explained everything! Very well. Then, would you mind checking your answers against my speculations? Yeah, I took the time to rest, so I'm feeling a lot more relaxed now. Nobody else is around, and Miss Sijuin is also busy with something or other. So, let's just talk here. All right, then I'll posit my theories. I asked myself three questions. Firstly, why was Fremenet affected by the primordial seawater? It was because he dove into the sea. 
My theory is, the long-lost Primordial Sea is probably very close to the Fortress of Meripede. Ooh, he's good! He got that right on the first try! That's Arlini. Secondly, Risley's attitude changed dramatically during the course of our stay here. He ignored us completely at first, then suddenly roadblocked us. Why? I spent quite a long time thinking about this. If he has been monitoring the Fatui since the very beginning, he probably ignored us at first because he was hoping we could find Master Child for him. What's more, the Fortress of Meripede is not part of Fontaine's court system, nor does it report to Udex Nervilet. Risley is basically the king of a no-man's land. As long as the fortress doesn't do anything about Master Child's disappearance, Father can use it to pressure the Fontaine authorities. And while the two factions are pitted against each other, Risley will be free to move between the parties of interest. If I had to guess, he probably has something that he's working on himself. It's likely related to the secret of the infirmary, but I just can't think of what it could be. You're super smart! <laughs> Thanks so much. Then finally, there's the last question. If Risley does have a plan, what could it be? All I know for now is that his plan probably has something to do with the changing nature of the seawater. He's even gotten Cloran to help him out. Ah, uh, that can't be the full extent of what he's doing. There's probably a secret passageway behind the block in the infirmary, and there's something big in the fortress that most people here never get to see. He has a bargaining chip, and it could be important enough for Father to deal with him directly. I don't have enough information, so I have no idea what his chip might be. But let me guess. You have the last piece of the puzzle. <sighs> I can't believe it. The sea will engulf everyone. Just like the prophecy said. Could Risley have wanted to meet Father to figure out a way to deal with this crisis? If you remember, I once mentioned that Father sees the House of the Hearth as her base of operations, and she truly wants to resolve the crisis. But how could Risley have known that? Or perhaps he didn't know, and just wanted to bring Father over to his side? Which could be why he said he just wanted to negotiate. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand your concerns as well, Traveler. I'll figure out a way to pass this on to our father. No matter what, we're on your side. The two of you have already aided us far too much. We probably wouldn't be standing here right now if not for you. If you ever need anything else going forward, please come to the House of the Hearth at any time. Though you may not share the sentiment, after all that we've gone through together, the three of us basically see you as family now. You have my gratitude. Thank you for protecting Linny when it really mattered. And thank you for sharing the secrets of the fortress with us. We didn't think you were going to do it. Uh, why are you being so formal all of a sudden? <laughs> Given your strength, you might not need our help at all. But if you are ever in danger, we will try our best to protect you. done so much already. Go get some food. Alright, then we'll catch you guys another time. <sighs> I feel like I should try to become someone more capable of helping. You're incredibly helpful. Lenny thinks so too. Yeah. You two are always telling me not to push myself, but aren't you just like that as well? <sighs> Too slow. <gasps> Quit following me. Cafeteria. Come on, let's go pick up our 
Paimon's as well. Ah, Traveler and Paimon, uh, over here. Are you here for dinner too, Miss Hijuin? Uh huh. And I'm taking the opportunity to prepare Miss Cloran's dinner as well. Huh? You're right. She's actually sitting in the fortress cafeteria. What would you like to eat? Yep, you can. I've already talked to our chef, Mr. Wolsey. It's all on me today, so you can get whatever you'd like. Me too! Don't forget Paimon! No problem. Just leave it to me. Delicious. Is this how it feels to be freeloaders? Wait a second, we did do plenty of work after all. Feeling full yet? How's the food? Delicious. Ah, I'm so glad to see you all so happy. Oh, see, the expression on your face just now? But the muscle here just moved, which suggests that you're feeling quite relaxed at the moment. Sijuin, do you do this to help your patients or to better understand human beings? <sighs> A bit of both, I suppose. I'm a melazine, which means I'm very different from human beings. I must know what you're thinking if I want to take good care of you. You're really good at taking care of people. Even though you're so short, you still talk and act like an older sister. Really? You're reminded of an older sister? <laughs> That's great to hear. Oh, and what did you mean back in Risley's office? When you said that you were protecting Linny and his siblings as well? Oh, that. I just asked his grace to look out for those children, especially that diver boy. I was getting a bit worried after hearing that something was wrong with the water. Thankfully, Glorand is very strong and managed to save him in the nick of time. His grace also sealed the pipes after Glorand left, to make sure that Lene wouldn't impulsively chase after his brother. Although the path was blocked, we still stationed some guards there to stop anyone from approaching. They were instructed to only open the door once Miss Glorand had returned. Oh, and I was keeping an eye on Mr. Linny as well. We had to press him, but we couldn't allow him to be in any real danger. You were all super considerate and really thought everything through. <laughs> it's just what we do down here at the fortress. At least this has been his grace's style for as long as he's been the leader. Oh, I really wish Monsieur Nervula would come down here more often too. I feel like he'd like it here. <laughs> With all the darkness and chaos. Get a good night's rest, you two. You both worked very hard. Huh. Search for it. Huh. Too slow. Has happened. Parma 
Ellen just feels absolutely exhausted now that she's finally relaxed. <sighs> I'm super sleepy. Are you sleepy too? No time to explain, mate. Goodbye. Uh, hey, wait! What's wrong with these people? They won't even talk to us. They're here! There you are! Oh, thank goodness! We came here especially to inform you. Something seems to have gone terribly wrong just now. His Grace is telling everyone to evacuate and get out of here. Lavaroon was saying you two are new here and you don't have many friends, so you might slip through the cracks. Haven't you heard all the stories like that? An evacuation is successfully completed, yet you only find out once you do a head count that one or two people are missing. Wait, weren't you the one who brought that up? Why is it suddenly my idea? Hey, shut up! Okay, whatever. The point is, you should come with us. Yeah, he said to get as far away as possible, upwards and outwards. Oh no, it can't be that thing! Whoa, wait, what? What? Hey, where are you going? We have to go find the Duke! You two just go and get out! Go on without us! Hey, hey! Be careful! Attention! Please evacuate upwards and outwards! Upwards and outwards! If you're already at the top of the slayer, then try to move as far outwards as possible. The wind rises. They're here. Just like I said. We have it! Look! <sighs> You're just in time. Hmm? But be ready to run.
This won't hold it for long. Find Nuvilet. Tell him the defenses are about to collapse. Then what will happen to you? Until he arrives, we're the last line of defense. <laughs> the gate. How long do you think it'll hold? That depends on us. <laughs> Traveler, I need you to head to the Opera House immediately. Farina will soon be meeting with the Knave there. You must protect Farina, and make sure she doesn't spend too much time alone with her. Will do. You have my sincerest gratitude. Squall of Fury! Search for it. Look! There are a ton of Fatui and Palais Marmonia people over there! The Knave is probably here already. We need to hurry! Are you two the Traveler in Paimon? Monsieur Nervalet has left instructions. Please follow me. Though I'm sure he's already explained, this should be a mostly cordial conversation unlikely to give rise to violence. But it would be most appreciated if you could protect Lady Farina to the best of your abilities. Oh, so you two are the honored guests Miss Farina mentioned. Of course, of course! How could they not attend a meeting such as this? I must always have two or more guests at my dessert table. Otherwise, the occasion would be too lonely and unbecoming of my station. It is my pleasure to make your acquaintance, Traveler. I have heard much of your accomplishments. I am the Knave. One of the eleven Fatui Harbingers. I've already prepared seats for you. Come, sit beside me. Perhaps you two are unaware of how Miss Farina and I do things. You see, we actually recently agreed to get together for tea when we had the time. See this? This is a limited type of confectionery that Miss Farina simply adores. There are only 16 slices sold every day. Here, why don't you and Paimon have a taste? Traveler, what do you think of this cake? That's good to hear. So what Child said was on the mark after all. You do share a taste in desserts with Farina and I. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. You must have heard, right? He's suddenly gone missing. I'm really worried about his safety, you know. Here's to hoping that he's an excellent swimmer. Uh... Since we are talking about him, I feel like I should add something. His martial prowess really looked... certainly pretty impressive, yeah. Oh, so you're also familiar with his aptitude for fighting, Miss Farina. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Child was subdued by Udex Nuvillette right in front of you. Against ordinary people, my colleague would never be on the back foot. But alas, he just never imagined he'd run into such a person. Hmm. I must express my admiration for Monsieur Nuvillette. Hmm. Coming from you, that's not surprising at all. 
Uh, but I thought you would be happier to hear the news. Of course, but it's still a bit of a shame. You see, I would have been far happier had I received this news somewhat earlier. As you well know, a long time has passed since Child disappeared. Uh, uh, well, in any case, there's no need to worry. We know for sure that Child is still alive. Oh, and just how do you know that? Because... Uh, because we found evidence that proved he left the Fortress of Meripede. And where did he go after leaving the Fortress? Well... The Fortress of Meripede lies deep beneath the waves. Oh, that is good news at least. His sister Tonya sent a letter to Fontaine not too long ago. Since he was unfortunately unavailable, I picked it up on his behalf. Do you have any idea how he usually writes back to his family? Dear Tonya, your letter made me feel like we were still enjoying our time in Snezhnaya together. I'm currently admiring the scenery on the streets in front of the Opera House. Is it something like that? Letters tend to follow the same few formats anyway, right? As long as the contents are accurate, it doesn't matter so much how it's written or how it's worded. <sighs> Hold on. The water in the teacup is shaking. Hmm. I suppose this is also a sign of things to come, Miss Farina. Huh? Uh, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. Have we entered into the next stage of the prophecy? <sighs> <laughs> My thanks to you both. I will take it from here. Hmm? <laughs> sure you don't need a hand? Quite sure. Wow. So, what's your secret, huh? Uh, let me guess. Nah, who knows. Maybe it's just your sense of responsibility. <laughs> hmm. Sounds about right. Day may come when the prophecy is fulfilled and the waters burst forth, but it is not this day. This ancient power could easily obliterate an entire race. A tsunami of fury would unleash endless catastrophe. <laughs> Forgive me for overruling it. All right. Seems like the problem inside has been suppressed. Let me guess. We're safe for now. <laughs> Indeed. But only for now. I win this bet. You owe me a present. <sighs> Very well. It was indeed just as you said. You made a bet? We made a bet on the size of your entourage. Cloran thought you wouldn't come down by yourself. I figured you would have at least brought a few people along for appearances sake. It appears I underestimated just how confidential the mission was. Shouldn't you have gotten used to confidential missions by now? That's just how the courts operate. So what gift must the loser give? Tea? Hmm. He already has tons of tea in his office. I'm thinking about a set of legal codices. That wouldn't happen to be a dig at my lack of legal awareness, would it? Well, I'm sure His Grace doesn't consider the fortress to be outside the law. 
I was under the impression the residents of a place like this would be uninterested in the legal codices. <sighs> that was obviously a joke. Uh, anyway, you've still got some unfinished business to attend to in the overworld, correct? No need to stay here if you have a pressing matter. We all know you can't leave Palais Mermonia for long. Thank you. I hope everything went smoothly with the Fatui Harbinger. I must say, we've spent long enough playing house, Miss Farina. As the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Heart have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you? It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. You're wrong. I've never ignored the prophecy, nor have I just been passing the time in self-indulgence. Retract your accusation and stop doubting the wisdom of the gods with such absurd conjectures! I am not alone in my doubts, you know. All the children of Fontaine may be harboring the exact same thoughts right now. Oh, great Hydro Archon. How are you going to save them? Save us? How are the people you've sworn to protect supposed to survive in a land that will soon disappear beneath the waves? I have my ways, and I've been working on them for all this time. Even if you look down upon me, you have no right to judge me! Fontaine will be saved. Even... Even if I still cannot see the true future right now, as long as I continue on as I am, I will be able to hold my head up high! Then I ask you, Miss Farina, just what have you been working on? Where can we see it, and what is it doing to help? <sighs> I... <sighs> My machinations are just like the prophecy itself. They will only reveal themselves at the fated time. It is just that beings like yourselves are unable to perceive them as of yet. Mm, I see. As a god, the proof of your labor always lies beyond prying mortal eyes. Allow me to be so bold as to ask another way. Would it be possible for you to tell us the parts of your plan that are not confidential? Such as, your emergency response plan for the impending disaster? Uh, an emergency response plan? Oh, that look in your eyes. Have you not even prepared one of those? The, the emergency response plan is also strictly confidential. Then allow me to jog your memory, Miss Farina. What is the purpose of your Oratrice Mechanique Denelise Cardinal? And what do you plan to do with the massive amounts of Indemnidium that has accumulated over the years? The Oratrice? It, it's just like it appears to be. Hmm. So you also have no idea. If I'm not mistaken, someone's using it to prepare for something. But unfortunately, it would seem that someone is not you, Miss Farina. I first caught wind of this when Linny tried to investigate the Oratrice in the Opera House. 
You see, even just getting close to the core contaminated him with an extremely large amount of indemnidium. But even if that had nothing to do with you, then what could you possibly be working on, oh great Hydro Archon? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Eudex Nouvellet is not at the tea party with us today. Miss Farina, I suppose you must have ordered him away to take care of some troublesome business. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's exactly right. Please keep it a secret for me. Of course I will. Although, I must say, Miss Farina, you seem quite insecure without the Eudex by your side. Oh, very well. Let's stop that conversation here. There are still a few slices of cake left, so please, help yourselves, everyone. Traveler, I heard that you were recently commissioned to handle a few matters on behalf of the Udex. Why don't you take an extra slice of cake? Those who work hard deserve gratitude and praise. You too, Paimon. Uh, thank you. Paimon will take you up on that offer. Oh, Paimon's super full. That cake was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if it's on my tea table, it must be of the highest quality. Uh, yes, and we must thank the Nay for bringing these over as well. You're welcome. I'm sure the cake also felt greatly honored to be featured at Miss Farina's table. And I was merely catering to Miss Farina's tastes, seeking a chance to chat over tea. Mm, it is getting late. Why don't we call it a day? There are still a few matters that I need to take care of, so I must take my leave now. Very well. We'll end it here. Mind seeing me off, Traveler. We could use the opportunity to discuss child before I must be on my way. Paimon's coming too! <sighs> the tea party turned out to be even more difficult than I'd imagined. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Is something the matter? If there's nothing urgent, then I shall be retiring for now. I'm glad that you were willing to come with me. Of course, child was just an excuse. I have no interest in your dealings with him. That's what Paimon thought! You lent your aid to the children of the House of the Hearth. As their father? I would like to express my gratitude. Do I look like an irresponsible father to you? <laughs> the House of the Hearth is very important to me. You should know that I care deeply about my children. That was all. Formal topics should be discussed in formal settings, and informal topics in informal settings. I know you just returned from the fortress of Meripede. Relax, I have no intention of trying to get anything out of you. Linny, Lynette, and Fremine are still there, and I trust their judgment and abilities. They've all been working very hard and have always done all they can to fight back against anyone who tried to stop them. Especially Lenny. You mean Ridesley. He's a tricky one to deal with. Hmm. It's unfortunate that Lenny's so eager to prove himself that he can't learn to rely on others. Including me. By the way, and you can just consider this a bit of idle gossip, but what's your impression of Farina? 
You are outside of our disputes, and the freest person in all of Fontaine, able to move around most easily. Allow me to share my perspective with you. And that's everything that happened during the trial. Master Child was declared guilty and immediately transported to the Fortress of Meropede. Didn't he say he was coming here on vacation? Does he not feel an ounce of shame for all the trouble he has caused? Uh, I... I... Forget it. He did give us an opportunity. I will be meeting someone shortly. Do you require help with any preparations? No need. I will take care of it myself. I need to meet with Farina, the Hydro Archon. She is at the heart of Fontaine. But what's fascinating about her is that she often seems more like a celebrity than a working Archon. Oh? Come over here, you little critter, you! You dare to run from me? Stop right this instant! My goal is just to discover the location of the Gnosis. But I didn't expect the chance to approach Farina to be handed to me on a silver platter. This is so easy, it's actually making me a bit suspicious. Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. But no one will blame someone for taking the bait. After all, from the moment it was attached to the hook, the bait is meant to be sacrificed. <laughs> It's just as I guessed in the second before I struck. The Hydronosis is not currently held by the Archon. In fact, this Archon doesn't seem like a god at all. And I sense that she's under some kind of curse. Who are you? And, and what are you trying to do? Please don't kill me! I'm begging you, please! The fear in her pupils is genuine. So perhaps she's not bait after all. Either way, targeting her has lost all meaning. Hmm. I left the scene with ease. Nobody came looking for me, and nobody could serve as a witness to my near assassination of Fosalor. I suspect even Verena dares not mention this incident to anyone. Not long after, my informants confirmed what I had guessed. After returning to her quarters, Verena quietly cried alone. She was so scared that she could not sleep that night, nor could she even bring herself to eat her cake. There's no doubt that there's something wrong with her. I began to entertain the possibility that she is not the true Hydro Archon. Perhaps Eudex Nuvillette is actually the genuine article. I have to find the Gnosis. If the Nuvillette hypothesis is correct, he is probably in possession of it. Alternatively, it might have been hidden in a place that's hard for ordinary people to access. Yes, father. My dear children, please speak. News from the fortress of Meripede. Master... Master Child has gone missing. On top of that, the contacts and guards we bribed at the fortress have all gone quiet as well. Probably the handiwork of that Ridesley. I'm afraid so. This is a good opportunity. The value of a Harbinger is much higher than most would imagine. We now have an excuse to exert diplomatic pressure on the Fontaine authorities. Set up a meeting for me. I would like to meet the Hydro Archon and Eudex Nuvillette. Oh, and I have an additional mission for you three. Yes, yes Father. Father. Tartaglia's disappearance was not a part of my plan, but I can use it to make a breakthrough. With this as my excuse, I can ask for an official audience and continue my investigation of Farina and Eudex Nuvillette. The initiative belongs to the House of the Hearth. My wish to investigate the Fortress of Meripede will be a front. Linny and his group will be responsible for the actual intelligence gathering. You should know the rest. Linny's group is quite close to you. So, they wouldn't have hidden anything from you. Y you attacked the Hydro Archon? It wouldn't mean anything, even if you shouted it from the rooftops. After all, even Farina herself is still pretending that nothing of that sort ever happened. Uh, alright then. I've now had two chances to enjoy tea with Farina. I have to say, the leadership of Fontaine is even more inscrutable than I had imagined. I once surmised that Eudex Nuvillette must be the Hydro Archon, but now, 
That doesn't seem right to me either. I am a servant of Her Majesty the Tsaritsa. Over my years of service, I've learned how a real Archon conducts and carries themselves. Whether Udex Nuvillette or Farina, neither fits the bill. It's hard to imagine either of them as the Archon. Of course, that is all just how I feel. Gut feelings often do not require justification. It is, however, quite amusing to me that after all my years working in intelligence gathering, I've come to realize I am at a complete loss regarding the identity of the god of the land of my birth. Don't you think Fontaine is quite intriguing? A catastrophe looms, yet many secrets have yet to rise to the surface. <sighs> it looks like Fontanians will have no choice but to save themselves. Ultimately, though, one must survive in order to do anything else. Should the need arise, I would be happy to cooperate with you. You don't need to commit to anything right now, of course. I have a feeling that the situation will continue to evolve, and as your name is often connected with noble deeds, I'm sure we will work together someday. He certainly returned quickly. You must want to catch up with each other, so I'll leave you to him. Hmm. Nevelette, is it over? For now, yes. But this issue will prove quite thorny in the long term. I am concerned that sooner or later the prophesied events will occur. Thank you for protecting Farina. Hmm. To put it simply, I used my power to force back the Primordial Sea and reseal the Sluice Gate. Hmm. So as expected, the knave has turned up the pressure on Farina. She's trying to feel her out, though I'm still unsure as to her motives. Permission granted. Whoa. It can't be that you're the real Hydro Archon, right? But that's just a speculation on our part, though. <laughs> you can't tell us? Then... Then that's okay. We can talk about something else. We won't try to force you. <laughs> you guys in Fontaine are super strange. If by the phrase, you guys, you are referring to Farina and I, then although I'm not sure just what you are trying to imply, I must clarify that I do not share her positions on a multitude of topics. I believe so. The fortress has a long and complex history. It has seen much grief and suffering. And now, another catastrophe will soon be upon us. I mourn this turn of events. Huh? Why is it raining all of a sudden? You may be closer to the truth than you think. Oh? And what are you thinking? The... Dragon... of... Uh, what? Huh? Please do not be so surprised. <sighs> Farina? My apologies. We were just guessing randomly. We didn't guess right, did we? You're not actually the Dragon Sovereign of Water, right? Well, if you don't want to confirm or deny... <sighs> you guessed correctly. I sincerely hope you'll be able to keep this a secret for me. Uh, right, of course. We'll definitely help you keep it a secret. There's still something Paimon wants to ask you, though. Please, go ahead. Well... If you are the Dragon Sovereign of Water, and you are able to force back the Primordial Sea from the fortress, then since Fontaine's prophecy is all about seawater, couldn't you just use your power to solve the crisis? None of the currently living Dragon Sovereigns in the world, myself included, possess our full Dragonhood. They say that when the first usurper arrived on Tivat, they seized a part of the Dragon's power. Today, 
That stolen power is the basis of the Archon's authorities. There are seven elemental Archons and seven matching Dragon Sovereigns. The Dragon Sovereign of Water who lived through that era perished a long time ago. As their successor, I know far less of that part of our ancient history. In any case, I believe I will not be able to do much unless the Archon disappears and returns their elemental authority to me. Given the status quo, however, I would recommend finding another way to deal with the prophecy. Oh, so even you can't solve it. I still have some urgent matters to attend to at my office. If you have any more questions regarding ancient history, you are welcome to discuss them with me at a later time. Ah, please go right ahead. There's a place that Paimon wants to go to. Traveler, why don't we pay another visit to the Fortress of Meripede? Paimon is a little worried. We'll see you another time. Take care. Rises. You guys are back? You guys didn't get caught and thrown back down here, right? Huh? No, not at all. Ah, and here I thought you'd managed to escape from jail during all the commotion. I'd held you up as legendary jailbreakers, but now you're telling me you just never left? Uh, <laughs> we're sorry, but we just had some business to take care of. All right, all right. There's no need to get caught up in the details. We're just relieved to see you. He was super worried about you, you know. <laughs> hey, it wasn't just me. Weren't you super worried as well? Uh, something like that, yeah. I was also transferred to work in the kitchen a few days ago. I can still hear Quisto mumbling to the carrots. Are those two all right? Do you think they made it out alive? Whenever he'd say that, I'd tell him I'm sure they're fine. Wherever they are, they're kicking back with drinks in hand, enjoying the lovely scenery. Hey! There's nothing wrong with worrying about your prison pals, is there? I mean, considering how they always love listening to all my gossip. These two, they sure are a lot warmer and friendlier than when Paimon first met them. Ah, oh, well, if you say so. I'll be watching you to make sure you finish every last bite. Behold! Following me. Sea Dream! Traveler! Paimon, you're back! Are you still doing all right? Did either of you get hurt? We're fine, but what about you guys? 
It was such a huge mess. How bad was it? A few people sustained superficial injuries, but that's about the extent of the damage. Monsieur Nervulet paid us a visit. It was all thanks to him that we managed to suppress the crisis for the time being. Of course, we must also thank you for the help you provided. How did Nervulet know that he was needed here? Well, Monsieur Nervulet has strong resonance with the hydro element. When the water level rises, he can feel the waves produced. I ran into the bombshell bros while bandaging the injuries of the wounded. They were mumbling the whole time about how you just ran down without a word. I'm so relieved to see that you're both all right. If you're not too pressed for time, please stay with us a few more days. Just let me know if you get a craving for any particular dish, so I can have Mr. Wolsey get your meals prepared. Oh, and please feel free to visit the infirmary for a break at any time. I'd like to take the opportunity to spend some more time observing your facial muscles as well. Your happy smiles are quite contagious, you know. They're so memorable, and I've missed them immensely while you were gone. Following me. Following me. Jurier? Miss Sijuin told me you still haven't eaten. Yeah, I was working on something, so I forgot. Uh, that's no excuse for. Huh? What's you two? Jurier, Lurveen, we're back! Hello there. It's been quite the mess here recently. How have you been? And you? Are you still taking the secret passageway from the infirmary to work on the ship? Yep. That is still top secret, though, so don't say a word to anyone. It can be a bit annoying when there are lots of people in the infirmary, but I still prefer taking that route over the one from the Duke's office. I mean, the infirmary does make it easier for you to slack off. Oh, <laughs> yeah? Then why are you also here so much? You two really are just using your jobs as a cover for your relationship, aren't you? Not at all! Too slow. Squall and Fury! <sighs> Quit following me! <laughs> the wind rises! Now guess, what suit will this next card be? Uh... A bear teeth cat? Well, well, look who it is. Traveler, Paimon! <sighs> Hello, everyone. Looks like you're recovering nicely, Fremenet. Eh? Mm-hmm. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, right. I... 
I managed to work up the courage to thank Miss Clorand in person. Whoa, how did she react? Uh, she told me that it was nothing. It was as if saving a life wasn't a big deal to her at all. She also told me not to worry about it. She didn't want to stress you out, that's all. She's right, and it's best not to dwell on it. Yeah. Okay, but check this out. We went back to the Opera House, and we met the Knave. You met Father? Did she say anything to you? She said a few things that were... Uh... A bit hard to understand. And also that she's looking forward to working with us in the future. Her attitude towards you is even better than what we'd imagined. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should believe her. She has her own way of doing things, and she'll do everything in her power to help those she considers close, which now might also include you. Mm-hmm. Father is very capable, and also trustworthy. Oh, Paimon just remembered that she thought Linny was a bit too proud as well. She said that you should learn how to rely on others sometimes. Uh, got it. Huh. That does sound like something that father would say. Hey! Are you going to stay here for the next few days? Looks like it, yeah! Excellent! I will host a tea party. For real? Then Paimon wants another serving of cake! Another implies that you were already served some delicious cake while you were up there. Hmm, how lovely. Well, next time, you're going to have tea and snacks with us. Following me. The wind rises. Too slow. Squall and fury. Do my eyes deceive me, or did I just see two inmates come back after making it to the surface? Some strange winds blowing of late. We wanted to see how the fortress is doing. Is everything still all right? We're fine, for the most part. Nervalet came down and took care of the worst of it. If that's the case, why don't you just ask him to stay here? Oh, yeah, what a brilliant plan. Let's go convince the Udex himself to exchange the Courts of Fontaine for a puddle of water in the middle of nowhere. He came here in a hurry and left without even stopping for a cup of tea. He did remember to take Miss Sijuin's gift with him, though. He sure sounds super busy. Miss Cloran has left as well. She also took her gift from Miss Sijuin. Were the gifts milkshakes? Nervalette got the milkshake. Cloran received lipstick instead. Uh, those aren't even remotely alike. Well, it's Nervalette's own fault for making Sijuin worried about his health by working so much. But besides that, our head nurse is still pretty fond of picking out beauty products for the ladies. Oh, and I have some gifts here for you as well. Are these from Sijuin too? Nope, they're from yours truly. You've already wrapped up your work at the fortress, so you can return to the surface at any time. You haven't yet served your full prison term, however, so you may continue to use your cell until your term is up. For real? Then we could stay here for a really long time? You may access the cafeteria for free. Hooray! Just remember to come complete your paperwork once it's time for your release. Your file can't be closed until we've completed your paperwork. So don't forget to come find me again when you're done serving your sentence. Behold! 
too slow. Again. We're no longer prisoners, though, so it really doesn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. Being free sure feels pretty special now. Huh? How did you know? Hey, that's not true! <sighs> All right. Okay, Paimon just wanted to say that we really are an amazing duo after all. It's like, we've now gone to so many places together and become friends with so many people. We've never stopped traveling or stopped meeting new friends. There are so many bad things in the world, and we're just two people, but... We've still been solving problems no matter where we go. Isn't that pretty cool? You're counting Paimon today? Aren't you the only adventurer here? Then let's ask Catherine to give Paimon an adventurer handbook as well! Paimon will also be an adventurer from today forward! Ah, uh, just got thoughts making Paimon giddy. Oh, Paimon's gonna crash, so you sleep soon, too. The last time we fell asleep here, we woke up to a whole mess outside ourselves. The primordial seawater nearly rose up. That was so scary. We should be safe now, right? All right, then. Good night to you, traveler. We last saw Nervlet. Paimon wonders what he's been up to. Paimon. Fury. Huh. 
too slow.
your pick. You'll find no second rate. Squalling fury. You're dead. Cry louder. The hunter. Following me. Vermin! Squall Fury! Following me. Huh. Orders given. Orders received. Just like we rehearsed. Go! <laughs> teamwork is dreamwork. Win right. That's far enough. Oh, 
fury. Following me. Fury. Following me. Huh, too slow. Life goes on. Let's light it up. Ah! The wind rises. I'm 
Sight the insects! You're dead! Fury. Following me. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Rises.
You're so happy just to see the sun again. How childish. Wait, did, uh, did I hear that right? Monsieur Nirvalet, are you sure you'd like to take over the case yourself? That's right. No, but why? Technically speaking, cases like this are better left to the guards. Nirvalet! Sadine! Hey there! What are you two talking about? Ugh, Traveler and Paimon, please help me talk our Chief Justice out of this. He wants to investigate a case on his own. No, this is completely unprecedented. How can we have the Udex acting like a private detective? Hmm? Thank you for your concern, but I currently have no such plans. Oh, apologies. I took your question in earnest, but it now occurs to me that it was most likely in jest. So, what is it exactly? It sure sounds serious if it's something you've got to investigate personally. A Melusine named Kiara received a threat letter. And then? That is all the information I have acquired at this stage. Huh? Uh, I have no idea why you're so hung up over this. I've checked the schedule in advance and it seems like there aren't any trials today. So, if you insist... Uh, I have no objections. Thank you for understanding. I will leave a note explaining my absence on my desk. I would appreciate it if you could take it to Lady Farina. She may have no interest in official affairs, but standard procedure dictates that I'm still responsible for reporting to her. Yes, yes, understood. I'll come back later and deliver the note to her. Judging from Sadine's reaction, it must be pretty rare for you to investigate stuff personally. What's so special about this case? I cannot tell you just yet, but it reminded me of certain past events. There could be complicated conflicts of interest behind all this, so I must eliminate all risks in advance. Come on! Stop being so secretive! We still have no idea what's going on! It is not my intention to keep you in the dark. But I need some time to revisit those memories and collect my thoughts. Long story short, a little more than 400 years ago, I became the Udex of Fontaine and initiated a series of institutional reforms. There were few people I could trust, but I had two subordinates who were exceptionally trustworthy and capable. Carol, a Melusine, and Vautrin, leader of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. They must have been amazing people to receive such high praise from you! Indeed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to protect them. The reforms damaged the interests of some, and the more conservative faction took advantage of Carol's identity to instigate political unrest. Ultimately, they wanted me to yield more of my power. The incident resulted in Carol taking her own life, and Vautrin being exiled. From then on, I've been especially careful when dealing with cases related to Melusines. All Melusines used to live a secluded life away from human society. I granted their wishes when some of them, including Carol, asked me to bring them to the court of Fontaine. Many common folk believe that I share a special bond with the Melusines, and whatever they do can be traced back to me. Some of them, especially those who hold a grudge against me, exploit that belief and stir up conflict over Melusines in an attempt to lay the blame on me. I have nothing against the opinions of others, but the moment a whirlpool of conspiracy forms, it inevitably affects the innocent. It has already happened once, and I want to make sure it does not happen again. Um, even so, why do you have to be the one investigating? There's the guards, the Mari Chausse Phantom, and the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Aren't they more than enough to figure out what's going on? 
Based on prior experience, there is a high chance that those who hold hostility towards me do not belong to the same department. The political system of Fontaine is relatively complex and involves the interests of multiple different factions. However, since I am technically an outsider in Fontaine, a lot of trouble could be avoided if I personally took on the case. Outsider? But aren't you the Chief Justice of Fontaine? Why would you be an outsider? I understand where you are coming from, but there is not necessarily a connection between my responsibilities and how I perceive myself. You know very well about my true identity, and have even met others of my kind in other nations. Even though I was born with a human form, there is a fundamental difference between dragons and humans. Taking on the role of Chief Justice does not make me a part of this community. In fact, the status I was granted has prevented me from forming deeper bonds with others. I have lived in Fontaine for a long time, but I do not belong here. That is why I call myself an outsider. A fish out of water. Yeah, we have nothing to do with all those organizations anyway. So how about we come with you on your investigation? Let's team up and round up all the bad guys lurking in the dark. Hmm, that does not sound like a bad idea. I rarely investigate cases on my own, but with professionals like you around, I'm sure it will go a lot smoother. Oh, <laughs> Vaimon's starting to get a little embarrassed. Just leave it to us. I will write my note of absence right away. Let us depart together once I'm done. Let us go. We should visit Kiara first and try to gain a better understanding of the situation. Um, so Nuvalet feels like he doesn't truly belong here in Fontaine, but... Is that really true? Paimon feels like he has a kind of skewed perspective on a lot of things. Anyway, let's catch up with him first. Paimon's been thinking. You called yourself a fish out of water, right? But since you're the... <laughs> 